My name is David Beal. I'm an artist who lives in uh, the Mid-Hudson Valley of New York. I migrated up here from New York City where I lived for almost 50 years. Uh, I went to art school at School of Visual Arts and I was in the first graduating class with a BFA. There were only 12 of us. I went to SVA and I was a fine arts major and I did a lot of uh, sculpture using video and I made a lot of photographs and I did a lot of drawing with um, an artist named Will Inslee. I guess what happened to me with the green drawings that are um, on Persona Land site was I was walking through Central Park one day and I found a, a discarded um, Polaroid negative. And back in the early days of Polaroid, uh, it was a, it was a two-part system where you peeled apart the sandwiched piece of film or the print, and you saved the positive part and the negative part you threw away. So in those days, you could find all sorts of weird artifacts that were in Central Park. Most of them were pretty nasty. I found this Polaroid that was truly mysterious. It was of a, a family or some kind of a gathering, and it was the quintessential sort of snapshot that anybody in America might take. That became sort of the, the basis of the first drawing that I did in this style, because uh, a negative, when it's exposed to light, and it still has chemistry that's alive in it, will become solarized to the light. So the, the colors change and values change. And, and all of that really appealed to me. It was more interesting than the, the regular black and white print. The, this negative became a whole thing to mine and to explore. And as I did more of these, I started to think that our concept of negative space that you learn in art history has really to do with the turn of the 20th century when um, impressionists started to discover uh, orientalism in, in the, the far uh, east. But negative space can also have content. These drawings, they're reversed. Negative is positive, like the three generations that have my family, my wife, uh, my kids and my uh, mother-in-law, and they're all at a, at a table. It, it's truly a negative. I took that photo myself and I reversed it uh, because I thought it was more interesting. The subject matter for the drawings are things that they were truly found or, or discarded thing, images, but half of the photographs that are in this group are things that I are pictures that I made myself and then um, altered somehow. I reversed them in my head or I, you know, changed the composition and added things or took things away. They're uh, very flat and I tried to eliminate perspective. They're all made with colored pencil, uh, which is applied layer after layer. And they're kind of blended together with my fingers or my thumb, much the way that you would use oil paint and then, you know, the medium to feather shapes together, that blending technique, somewhat ambiguous. And I think lighting really defines shape, but in my case, I really wanted it to obscure and to become more mysterious. I was sort of driven from a, an emotional state. I think it's the Kosciuszko Bridge, or I'm not sure, but anyway, it's in New Jersey and it's near Newark. But there was something about that, that bridge at night that reminded me of my past, uh, because in Cleveland, there's lots of bridges like that over what they, an area called the Flats, where all the steel mills are that crosses the Cuyahoga River that caught on fire and burned on a bridge in 1969. And I went out onto the bridge sidewalk, which is in the drawing, with a four by five camera on a tripod and shot 
a bunch of Polaroids for reference, there's this, this weird kind of perspective thing that happens between the right side of the picture and the left side where you see this river and it's, it's not flat anymore. It, it looks like it changes from you know, being up high to, to lower. And then you can see off to the left side, there's the Twin Towers because it's back in the 1990s when I made it. And they're like from the city off in this distance. And there's a little figure who controls the bridge in a little window and he's sort of silhouetted. And, and I thought this is like, you know, a God figure almost who runs this bridge. And then it, if you start to think about it, I, I realized this is almost like the river Styx where, you know, you've got one world of New York City and the other world of New Jersey or the rest of the America, which is so completely different. And there's this, you know, bridge keeper in between the two sides. Anyway, it just has all these personal references. And that's the thing about drawings. You know, they're, a photograph happens in an instant. And, you know, you can manipulate it and change it. But a drawing, you, you pour so much more thought and emotion into because most of these drawings took 30 hours or more to make. They're layer upon layer upon layer of colored pencil. And it's almost like a, what they call a, a, a dye transfer print <clears throat> with the three primaries in black. I would start with yellow and then add a little bit of, of, of another color and slowly layer them up so they would change and they would alter. And in that process, they, you know, would would grow out of the photograph and become something else. And after a certain point, you just didn't even need the reference of any kind of uh, appropriated found object. The, the, the drawing took on a life of its own the way a painting would. Um, so that, that's a curious but uh, interesting thing about uh, a work that, that takes a lot of time and a lot of, uh, it's like a meditation almost when you pour yourself into it and it takes on a life of its own.